Jesus says, I am about to shake the tree violently, for the fruit is ripe. November 18th, 2021. Words from Jesus through Sister Claire, spoken by Jackie. Claire began, Lord Jesus, please give us your heart for the lost along with endurance to run our race to the end. Amen. After feeling so distant from the Lord, I went to my special books that I only go to when I'm really having a problem. And what do I open to? The rapture. The moment I saw that, my heart fell and I felt sick. And I realized I'm upset that the rapture has not happened yet. Interesting, I had not really acknowledged that. It was under the surface. So I'm upset about the rapture, waiting and waiting and nothing. Lord, does it not say in your word that a cloud that brings no rain is a disappointment? And Jesus replied immediately. Are you angry with me? I'm hurt and tired. But I love you, and I know there are others you want to save. Oh, I cannot hide anything from you. I'm disheartened. Could that have anything to do with our communication block? Could it be that you are blocking me out of insecurity, lying spirits, or feeling lost? Yes, Lord, I feel very lost, downright depressed. You are not a false prophet. You are just impatient. My heart is broken in two for these souls, and you want the first flight out of Dodge. You are tired. You are spent. You are disappointed with me. Oh, Lord, that is terrible. I do not ever want to be disappointed with you. You cannot hide it from me. I know I'm heartsick and selfish. Thank you for recognizing that. I'm sorry that I'm this way. Well, what are we going to do about it? I do not know. The hurt is deep. I do not want to be this way. I just am. Human? Yes, you are just human, Claire. Oh, so human. And I hate being human. I want to be your faithful spouse, cheering us on as we run our last course together, not a pouting old couch potato. I understand. I'm so disappointed, disillusioned. I sent you the story about the slight delay my father granted me. Lord, I do not want to feel this way. It is fatal disappointment. Please take it away, please. I want to be supportive of whatever you desire, not selfishly wanting a ticket out of here. Well, at least now we have got it out in the open. Yeah, thank you. It sure is ugly, but Ezekiel is feeling it too. Claire, my whole body is feeling it, not just you two. And if you think for one moment that I'm not feeling it, well, you are wrong. Not just the sin that continues troubles me, but especially the torture of innocent children. I long to have you in heaven with me. I truly do. Let it suffice for now that we write love letters back and forth to one another. But my heart is still longing to hold you in my arms and whisper, well done. This is a trial for me as well, beloved. I do love you, I do miss you, and I want all of this to be over with. But so many souls hang in the balance in this hour. We have already done so much to get their attention, but it has not had the desired result. 
Changes in the earth and the sky will be an aid to getting their attention. Yet my mercy has held back some of the worst things that should have happened by now. There is a balance I must consider, not only in terms of fulfilling scripture and punishing the sinful, but the dynamics between nations is also headed towards fulfillment. My people, my brides, do not think for one moment that this delay and these trials are easy for me, though I weep copious tears for those unjustly kidnapped, tortured and murdered, though I weep for those who are perpetrating these crimes against humanity and long to save them, though I see the total exhaustion of my brides every day. I must do all I can to save as many as I can. It is costing me dearly, hour by hour, as we all labor together to save as many as we can. I promise you, Claire, I will not let you fail or lose your salvation. I promise you, my beloved brides, I am sending you the graces you need to endure until the end. I am trying to make it easier for you. I know what each of you suffer every day that goes by without the rapture. I hear the laughter and derision, scorn and contempt that you endure every day. I suffer all the torments you suffer as you do your very best to touch souls and remain faithful to me. I see everything. I miss nothing and I share in your disappointments. I share in the shame heaped on you. I share in the fatigue of seeing so many turn a deaf ear, even when I send them special provision to reach into their hearts. Truly, my beloved ones, we are one, for I suffer with you. Everything you must endure, I endure it with you. We are one. So, now I am appealing to your love for me. Please walk this last mile with me and bring as many as you can into the kingdom of God. For the fruit is ripe and I am about to shake the tree with such violence that every piece of fruit will fall to the ground and you will be there to gather it up into my barns. I am sending you renewed anointings, renewed hope and strength, renewed resolve to gather in your arms as much fruit as your arms can hold. But I need you to cleave to me with all your heart and soul. Do not expect to do this on your own. Rather wait for the grace and then move forward with great vigor and stamina. You say to me, what vigor? What stamina? I am exhausted. And I say to you, wait for it, my brides, wait for it, and pray and hope and prepare yourselves for action, because the time is coming when you will collect the fruit that others have planted and watered. The time is coming when you will experience true joy in your salvation. While he's talking to me, my faith is like a dirty limp dish rag. I have nothing, I'm bankrupt, lacking hope and faith. Lord, you know the only reason I'm writing this down is because it is your voice. But as far as having a witness to what you're saying, I'm failing miserably. God help me, come to my rescue. How can I spread this message when my very own heart is in such a disheveled condition? Do not be afraid, Claire. Grace is coming to lift you back up on your feet. Do not despair. I will not let you down. It is good that those who visit this channel should see your weakness, for they too are in the same rundown state of desperation. And just as I shall fill you and you will rally, so shall I fill them that they may be faithful to the end. you think you could do this on your own? 
Did you really believe you could carry these crosses with your own strength? All of you, I want you to know there are assignments against your faith that have been sent out like salt on fire. Yes, wherever you live, there are covens nearby that operate to discourage and cause failure in Christian communities. They are all over the world and growing because this is Satan's hour. This is his stand to drag all souls to hell and every Christian on this earth has been targeted. But I say to you, this is your hour to stand up and take back territory, to shut down the works of darkness and break through the barriers, charging through their midst and crushing every work of the enemy. And you shall have the anointing to do this if you cleave to me and allow me to empower you with my love for fallen mankind, yes, even for the Satanists that curse you. There is no power on earth like love. They have only known hatred and vengeance. But you have known love. You have drunk deeply from the depth of my love for you. And love shall triumph over evil. In the end, love shall prevail. But with every step you take, wearing the sandals of the gospel of peace, love will leave an imprint. And those who seek to destroy you shall also step into this imprint, and it will begin to melt their hearts. Many will come to me, weary from the battle, seeking some kind of rest, and I will receive them into my heart. You who think Satan loves you, you too are growing weary. You too have doubts that perhaps this path you've committed to is a lie and a failure. You too feel the discouragement and the letdown that this path is heartless and cold. Something inside of you is stirring and saying, you've been deceived. This is not the path to happiness and fulfillment. This is the path to ever-increasing bitterness, hatred and wrath. This is the path to pain, suffering and disappointment. But unlike my people, there is no good reward for you, because there is only pain in store for Satan and all who serve him. He is not my equal. He is but a fallen angel, eaten up with hatred, jealousy, vengeance, and an unquenchable lust to drag all, including you, to hell. He has taught you to kill, steal and destroy because he is the fallen one of destruction, forever jealous of me and my kingdom, forever committed to killing the souls I have created. But his time is drawing to a close, his time is short and he knows it. So his wrath has no limits and you who are caught in the web of his lies will be his favorite quarry, for he will torment you and laugh you to scorn for believing every lie he fed you. Yes, he will delight in betraying you into despair. What is the remedy for you? Since you do not believe me, listen to near-death experiences and what happens to a soul when they die. Read John Ramirez, Satan's lead man in New York City. He will tell it like it is. You will get a clear picture of what is behind the empty promises of this hateful creature. Do you know that he set you up from the beginning by abusing you and introducing you to fear, hatred and despair? Yes, he set you up by manipulating those around you, those you thought you could trust. Then, when you reached the end of the end, he showed up and offered you a path to defense, a path to destroy and punish those he sent, to turn you against the world. Then he showed up as your benevolent savior, the father you never had, the big brother you never had, the priest you never had. Yes, he corrupted those people, so you would have nowhere to turn except to one of his covens. 
he has literally, in some cases, rubbed the scaly skin of his hands, gleefully wringing them, in anticipation of how he is going to make you scream in torment, just when you are confident of your reward in his kingdom. He fears the day of his demise, but anticipates the torture he will perform on his most faithful servants, servants that have been eaten up with hatred and vengeance towards me and everything holy. Consider, my children, who have turned to the wicked one. Consider, he has taught you to rape, kill, destroy, and torture. Do you really think there is anything benevolent in him? Do you really think he is capable of love? When Chandra Miras was tired and asked Satan, who, by the way, showed up every night to instruct him, when John asked for a vacation because he was exhausted from twenty years of cursing and evildoing, Satan said, Sure, I will give you a break. And then he proceeded to make John blind for one year. Here was the great Satanist, whom everyone feared, being led around by the hand of his mother. After twenty years of faithful cursing, his reward was the embarrassment of being led by the hand of an old woman. That is exactly what you can expect from Satan. John Ramirez is still alive after leaving the service of Satan because I am protecting him. I will also protect you if you will come to me confessing your sins, asking forgiveness and giving me your life. I will wash you clean as snow, will lift you up and hold you tenderly in my arms, wiping away the tears of your wasted years. I will forgive you and give you new life and the happiness you never believed possible. All this I will do for you because I love you and you are precious to me. Do not fear to come to me, my children. Forsake the devil, forsake evil and embrace a love you have never known. I am for you, not against you. I will cleanse you of blood guilt. I will put a new garment upon you and adorn you with jewels. All this I will do for you because I really truly love you with a love you have never known. Come to me, my yoke is easy, and I shall give you rest.